If you're coming to Barcelona this March 2024 and looking for the best things going on around the city, in this video, I'm going to break down some of the top festivals, celebrations, important events, and what March is like in Barcelona so that you won't miss a thing. But before we get too far into the video and that you don't have to take copious notes, all of these events, links, and a map are already all put together for you so you can take it with you while you're here. Just click the link below in the description or use this QR code to access my March travel guide to Barcelona. March is always a month where Barcelona starts to get a little bit nicer as we got that spring really starting to come in. Average highs will probably be around 60 degrees, but we've already seen this 2024 days where we've hit 70. So I would imagine March might be a little warmer as well. As always, I always recommend bringing different layers, especially around these times of the year so that in the morning and in the evening you're covered while midday, you're gonna have some beautiful sunny days. So definitely be prepared for that. Now, while it is still technically low season with all the things that are going on and the different events, I think you will start to notice a lot of different people, especially towards the end of the month. We'll talk a little bit later about what's going on during Easter, but that is a big week where not only Spaniards, but the rest of Europe that is really starting to travel. So you always notice a big spike and it's really incredible to see how many people are in the city. Apart from that, we've got a bunch of different festivals. So if you plan ahead, you'll know where to be, but also just walking around parts of that old city and other neighborhoods as well will give you an idea of some local traditions here in Barcelona. The first holiday is March 3rd, and it's a celebration of San Marí. Now, it's not a holiday per se around the entirety of Barcelona, but you will see a lot of celebrations going on in the neighborhoods of Sarria and Gracia. It's also a big holiday in San Cugat, that first city on the other side of Tibidabo, where it's actually a public holiday. And tradition has it that everybody makes a small pilgrimage over to the chapel of San Marí. Now, you don't have to make that walk over the mountain into the chapel, but if you are over in Gracia in that afternoon, evening time, usually what you'll see are some parades with people throwing candies around the neighborhood. It's always a good excuse to get over to Gracia, which is a neighborhood that is a little bit more local and offers some great bars and restaurants. Now the story and the legend behind San Medi is one that I've always found to be a little bit stranger and definitely less known. Medi was a farmer back in those Roman times during the persecution of the Christian. And when the Bishop of Barcelona, Cerver, flees the city, he's persecuted by those Romans. And when he passes Medi, he sees that he's planting his beans, tells him what's going on, but also tells him that he cannot lie. If the Romans ask anything, he has to tell the truth. When the Romans show up just a short time after, he tells them that yes, Cerve had passed this way, but he did so while he was planting his bean. Not a lie at all, but when the Romans look around, they see that the crop has miraculously grown, and they see that as him lying. They take him captive, they also find Cerve, and the story doesn't end well for either of them. Unfortunately, they're both killed. Now that pilgrimage today over to the chapel is something big in San Cugat, but it started in the 1800s in Gracia. A baker was unfortunately going through some illnesses and promised to make the pilgrimage out to San Medi's chapel if it would help him recover. Friends and family joined in, and when they made their first walk and came back, they started to pass out beans around the town. Today, that tradition has grown and grown, and instead of beans, now they throw out all sorts of candies, which is probably a lot more fun. So if you're over in the neighborhood, definitely take advantage of that. March 10th is not gonna be a big celebration in Barcelona, but it is the Zurich Marathon. Maybe you're coming over to run, if so, good luck to you. But it is a day to keep in mind because there are gonna be stoppages all over the city. If you have a car or if you're gonna plan on taking any public transportation, I would recommend getting on to the Metro because it's not gonna be affected by it. But if you have any important things to be doing, know that definitely in the morning, you're gonna have that run going all around the city. If you do wanna see that run, it's always a cool event to see as they pass by the beach, getting up to Monjuic. So it's something to keep in mind on March 10th. And now there's no bias here, but March 17th might just be the best day of the year. In Barcelona, St. Patrick's Day isn't a big holiday, but it really is an international holiday at this point anyway. So there's always places that you can go and celebrate. Plenty of Irish bars are going to be having events lasting the entire day that always get packed. You can go over to places like Flaherty's, Michael Collins, Dunn's, and even getting over to places like George Payne's are always going to be fun events. Grab a Guinness, enjoy yourselves. And one thing that you need to know in Spain in general is that usually on people's name days, they get nice little messages that say felicidades or felicitats. So if you want to send or leave a comment below, 
congratulating me on March 17th. I'll take them. Speaking of name days, March 19th is the day of Jose, Joseph, Joseph, whatever. If you have somebody that you know named that, you can send them that congratulations text. March 19th is Father's Day on a whole. So if your name is Jose, Joseph, Joseph, and your father, it's a double congratulations that you receive. But it's also the day of the first stone being placed in the Sagrada Familia all the way back in 1882. 2024 now is going to be 142 years since the original construction of that Sagrada Familia started. So even though that these monthly videos are usually geared toward things that you can only do in each of the months, because it is such an important date, I always recommend taking advantage and getting over to the Sagrada Familia on March 19th. March 20th, we've really got something special going on over at the Liceu Opera House. Sara Barres is doing a tour all around Spain and she'll be coming to Barcelona with a flamenco show called Vuela. This is a homage to Paco Lucia, one of the greatest flamenco artists of all time. And this is the only day that she's gonna be in Barcelona. Everybody always asks about seeing a flamenco show, where you should go, if you should even do it in Barcelona. And with an artist like Sara Barres, I think you should definitely see if you can get some tickets over into that Liceo Opera House. Not only is it an incredible venue, but you get some authentic flamenco to check out. Now those tickets are probably gonna go pretty fast, so if you find them sold out, something that you can do while you're here if you still wanna see that flamenco is getting over to the Palau de la Musica and that Music Palace, another incredible venue, has some flamenco shows for you as well. The Barcelona Beer Fest is back in 2024, and this year it's moving back to its normal month in March. From the 22nd to the 24th, if you can get over to Plaza España in that Monjuic area, you can get over to the Fira Barcelona. They're gonna be hosting another round of one of the biggest beer festivals in the entire country. Last year, I went over there with my buddy James, if you haven't seen that video already, but they had beers from all over the country, but also all over the world. It's a nice way to try out some different craft beers, have a good time, some music, games, all sorts of things going on. There's really good food as well. So it's something I definitely recommend checking out if you're here on those dates. Now, the second half of the month is when things really start getting going. And this is when you're really going to see that big spike in the number of people that are here in the city. And the place that you'll want to be, if you want to see all of this that's going on, it's going to be around that Gothic quarter, La Rambla, and really in that old part of the city. The first thing that's going to kick everything off are the festivals of San Josep Uriol, or the festivals of El Barri del Pi. So this is the area around Santa Maria del Pi, just off of La Rambla, that will be having its own festivals that are going on from the 16th to the 24th. The big day is March 23rd, and that's the day of San Josep Uriol, who is basically the patron saint of the area, but also a citizen of Barcelona. He's really known for his taking care of the poor, the sick, and his ability to cut up beets and turn them into coli. It's his story, his generosity that's really celebrated throughout the neighborhood. Now, it is a big time for the locals, especially the locals that live in the area. So it's not something that I would maybe plan your trips around, but it's always one that I think is always a nice surprise if you're walking around in that old part of the city and you can really check out some of the local customs. You'll see the gigants, the big giants making parades around in the area. And the Gigants del Pi are some of the most famous around the entire city. You'll also see a bunch of the different animals, the big heads, and all sorts of things going on. Like any festival in Barcelona, they will have their day of the Castellers, the human towers that you'll want to check out. And while we don't have the program yet, when we get a little bit closer, we'll be able to know what days those are planned for. Now, apart from San Josep Uriol, the other famous character who is celebrated during these days is Pero the Thief. This is a famous bandit from back in the day that lived in the neighborhood. He celebrated with some searches for the kids, looking for different coins and things all around the neighborhood. And believe it or not, Pero the Thief was so famous, he was actually used as the basis for a character in Cervantes' Don Quixote. Like I said before, I wouldn't plan your entire trip around it, but it's always nice to walk down one of those back streets in the Gothic Quarter and find some sort of parade, some sort of tradition going on inside of the old city. As San Josep Uriol festivals end, 
Easter week or Semana Santa is starting to begin. So from that 24th to the 31st of March, you've got Semana Santa. This is where you're going to see a lot of people in the city. It's always the first time that that high season really starts to be seen again in the city. So definitely walking around in the Gothic quarters where you're going to see a lot of things going on. But starting on that 24th for the Palm Sunday, you're going to see some things going on on La Rambla. You'll see a lot of palms around, especially at the cathedral where they'll have some mass. But there are some other days during the week that are some of the bigger events. You've got Holy Thursday and Good Friday, which are going to have different processions. One thing that everybody has in mind when they come over to Spain during Semana Santa is all of these big processions that are going down, taking up the entirety of the city. And that definitely is something that happens, but it tends to be in other cities. Places like Valladolid or any of the cities in the south, like Sevilla, Córdoba, they have those bigger processions. Barcelona probably isn't as known for having those processions, but they still do have some of them. A lot of times that happens over around the San Jaume church, just off of the Plaza San Jaume, in between that and La Rambla, where you can check that out. Just like the San Josep Uriol festivals, we don't have the full program out yet, but I will leave all of that in my March travel guide so that you'll know some of the things that you can see if you're looking to get around. You'll have not only those processions where they're moving around those religious objects, but you also have the Via Crucis, which is more of that representation of the stages of the cross. Obviously on Easter, the last day of the month, you're gonna have special masses around in the different churches. And yes, the next day, if you are staying into April, will be a holiday as any holiday that falls on a Sunday in Barcelona always has that day of Monday so that you can have a day off. So for that Easter week, I wouldn't plan on doing too many things related to the Easter celebrations, but if you are here over those days, make sure you are booking any of those attractions that you want to get into well ahead of time to make sure that you have the hours and days that you want. Easter Sunday also coincides with daylight savings here, so it is something that I always like to recommend in the videos because unfortunately we will be losing that hour of sleep. So make sure that you make those changes. Probably not something that I need to recommend in the videos because our phones basically take care of all of it for us, but it would be really unfortunate if you missed a big reservation or even your flight. And it might be a little extreme, but there are mistakes that people make all the time when they come to Barcelona. And I've made an entire video all about that so that it won't happen to you. So just click this one next and make sure you have a great time in Barcelona.